Wait, my car. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm <laughs> fortunately you're the only person I have on this phone. Yeah, <laughs> on the commission. We're just waiting for Peter to turn on the recording devices. I know exactly. Peter, Peter, good. Problems? Sounds good to me. All right. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Wednesday, November seventh meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Would the clerk help me with the roll call? Chairman Harley. I'm here. Clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes. No. Mr. Oichel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Here. Um, Mr. Omicki, Mr. Dean, Mr. Allard, Mr. Silver, and Mr. Edwards are not here. Uh, Ms. Antoniak. Here. Okay. So everybody's participating. We are at a minimum quorum uh, for the public. That means that everybody has to vote yes in order to pass uh, an application. So we'll move on to the first public hearing, application 2000-18-Z, Ucello Development, LLC, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.6.B2 for an oversized garage at 84 Whipperwill. Would you join us at the microphone? And uh, you know, sometimes it's easy enough to just lean it on a chair Check if you're going to refer to it. All right. And uh, start by giving us your name and uh, what we're here for. Uh, my name is Nick Ucello. I'm the owner of Ucello Development, a home building company based in Rocky Hill. I'm here tonight seeking a special permit for a garage that exceeds what is allowable in your regulations uh, per square footage. Uh, we're asking for it because the homeowner uh, was looking for access into the garage without opening the garage doors, the actual overhead doors. So we had to lengthen the garage a little bit to provide for a side entry like a, a man door and they also wanted um, some additional storage for lawn equipment and like a workbench stuff like that uh, i brought a rendering of the house i think you guys have the house plans um, but basically just to show that it doesn't the garage isn't like an overpowering component of the house design it's integrated into the into the main box of the house and um, you know it's really nothing atypical as far as three car garages go uh, in this day and age thank you questions <clears throat> we're waiting for George any questions George no um, look I went down there Yesterday, today, today, I guess. Uh, and it was quite wet down in there, and I see a, a wet parcel off to the right, but your driveway is coming in on the left side of the lot. Correct. Right? Into the garage, so that's not, certainly not part of it. Right. And you don't have, will you be filling down there? I'm just kind of curious. More than that. um, that's per the subdivision approval. Um, we're allowed to do minimal work in that area there. Okay. We have a yard drain that we're going to be basically setting so that we don't have standing water okay. there because that's a health hazard and, and whatever else. And we're going to be cleaning up some of like the neighbors dumped a bunch of sticks and junk and whatever. We're going to clean all that up and we're going to do some uh, enhancement to the to that area. But that's it. Okay. 
But you, you, you know, you passed the inland wetlands issues and all of that. Oh, yeah, that was all part of the original yeah. subdivision. Right, but I, I noticed the limits <clears throat> of the inland wetlands are right there. But that doesn't impact the uh, driveway. And uh, I assume you can put a reasonable front lawn in there and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think we're uh, from the garage itself, we're 22 some, something feet from that area. And then from the front door, we're like 35 feet. And we still have room to move the house back a little further on the site per the own, whatever yeah, the would, owner, yeah. you know, Probably once we want farther back than you need to by the regs, right? Right. Once we get it cleared, you know, what within what we can clear, then we'll decide if they want to slide it back a little or whatever. Okay. okay. There's not another house lot to your right, is there, other than the one that's there? No, there's an existing house to the right that yeah. was part of the old Whippoorwill Way. Right, exactly. Road. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's about it, Mr. Chairman. I, I was just curious, how large is the lot? Um, it's okay. So it's a little over half an acre, you think? Something like that, plus yeah, or minus? It's, it That's is. close enough. It's, it's one of our deeper lots. Okay, it seems pretty deep out yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you said you had to put the door on the side of where, where the three doors are. For the right, because otherwise, the only other place to put it would be like on the front elevation. Yeah, and it wouldn't, and that wouldn't look actually. That would not look good. Yeah, yeah. Right. I agree. Okay. You've already addressed the one reaction I had, which was, you know, basically, and when it comes to larger garages, it's all about the bulk, uh, the massing right. of it, right? So you're right; it's it's one big block. So I, I, I didn't have a significant concern about it. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak on this application? All right. Motion to Rich? close the hearing. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So five people will close the hearing. Would you like to make a motion on the application? Make a motion. We approve application 2000-18-Z as submitted. Second. Thank you both. All those, in, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Go build it. Thank you. Everybody. Go build it. Thank you. Peter, um, should we, we're getting some of these kind of proposals where they go over one way or the other the size of the garages should we be considering changes to our regulations to up at maybe 50 yard, uh, 50 square feet or something I believe we studied this a little while ago and at the time after I provided you with the information you decided to stay pat but I can dust off that research and bring it back to you and you guys can discuss it at a future meeting if you'd like some of some of these lots are big the yeah. houses are large and uh the three car garage is not unusual i think one other down there was two sure and that kind of thing so i, I can understand and then the configuration of this lot and the wetlands makes uh, issues that they have to deal with this way so okay uh, i don't know i i don't know i'm willing to do it but it, other commissioners have to want to do it too i don't know yeah, I mean, I'd, not to hold everybody else up, I mean, I, I think there's some value in having some of these because we had that one on Collier Road where, you know, it, it looked straightforward enough, but there was significant objection from mm -hmm. neighbors. Neighbors. neighbors because it was incongruous. I mean, and, you know, here it's not a situation where it's abutting anybody or, or, you know, obtrusive. I mean, it's built into the house rather than you know, having something the size of a small house thrown up in somebody's backyard. So, so I'd, I'd be more in a rush to get rid of things like RVs and boats than I would this one. So, <laughs> so, so Rich, you kind of feel uh, leaving it this way and uh, hitting some of these that go over a little bit is part of a... Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't have to belabor the ones that are easy. Right, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on to item 3.2, a public hearing again. Application 2001-18-Z. Fatbook Store, LLC. Karen Opper seeking a special permit in accordance with 
tough time spitting words out today. Section 5.8.A.1, Alcoholic Beverages, for the Tavern Permit at 446 Silas Dean. Welcome. Thank you. State your name and describe what's going on. Uh, I'm Karen Opper. I'm the owner of that bookstore, LLC. And um, we'd like to, uh, what we'd, we're asking for is that it's a tavern service bar only, which means that we won't be making any um, any structural changes to the building. What we would like to do to, is to be able to offer alcoholic beverages to our patrons that are 21 and over with proper identification. Um, and it'll be like a, a service bar where we come out and we'll say, here's our wine list, here's our local beverage, or local brew list, would you like a, a drink while you're here browsing the store? So you won't be walking up to a bar. Um, in order to continue to allow um, children or uh, youths under the age of 21 in the establishment, I have to have either a partitioned off bar where only 21 and older is allowed in that section or this is the other way to do it. Um, my hope is to bring the profits up so that we can go and build um, into the basement to expand into our basement or we can create a bar down there that won't interfere with the bookstore at all and also a, a private meeting space. So just to make sure I'm clear, the only way to do this is to uh, make it a service where you come out to the person and ask them, and there is no bar, and it's in a in a back room. Uh, That's correct. The, the That's storage correct. Storage is in a back room in a in a refrigerator. Right, right. Where where uh, the most of the alcoholic beverages beverages will be locked downstairs in the employee service only, um, and then we'll have a refrigerator upstairs behind the register where. Customers cannot come up. They can't come up to the register and say, I'd like a Michelob light. Um, it won't be that sort of bar. It'll be, you know, we, we'll bring it out to you while you're sitting down or while you're walking around. If, the, if there's an event, then I can offer a drink to people 21 years of age or older um, to have a drink while they're there. But um, it won't be the kind of thing that you can take something to go, and you won't be able to bring alcohol in the establishment either. You're basically serving it like a restaurant would serve it. Right. 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 Just without food. Just without food. Right. right. We do have some prepackaged foods, and we already offer offer coffee, um, tea, hot chocolate, um, soda, and Snapple. So there are alternatives to the alcohol, but obviously the profit margin is much higher with alcohol. So that's why I'd like to bring it, introduce it to. Why is that? Why do I have to pay so much more for my dinner? <laughs> Yo. Is it? limited to wine and beer or is it all types right of no it'll just be wine and beer it's not going to be like i mean we could probably make a mocktail but I, i'm not interested in being a bartender uh, you know once we have the bar downstairs mm -hmm. then i gotta hire a professional to do that yeah so that the downstairs is a second upcoming project right right way. okay okay is that a, is that a different permit yes i'd have to reapply um, for a cafe style or a tavern um, without the service bar only. So, so just so we don't end up in a box, um, you've, you've stated beer and wine. Does that mean, um, you know, like Mike's hard lemonade, that kind of stuff is would be off if we, or should we say it, should we describe it a little more broadly? Because I, because I, I assume that's probably okay with you to sit, you know, Mike's hard lemonade, or I just don't know how to malted beverages. What are they? What are they called? They are, Was it everything other than hard hard liquor? So anything other than hard liquor that you have to mix? She's not seeking that. I guess just right, right, sure she's right. Not. No hard liquor. Just yeah. things that already are in a bottle <laughs> that I can pour in a cup. That's it. Um, so I'm not looking for. I mean, I, I don't think I would offer things like Mark's, Mark, Mike's Hard Lemonade or um, a Jim and Coke. That's just not the sort of, I'd probably offer local brews like Sam Adams, something like that. Um, maybe some other local, local like Fat Tire um, and, and wine, just, you know, reds or what do you want a red or a white? Here's the reds we have, here's the whites we have. Or um, it's it's not going to be like a huge bar where you can you know I'll have like a thirty page list. Uh, it's going to be like f there's five alcoholic I items you can choose from. That's it. Uh, okay, guess, Joe. Based on the description that she's given in terms of it being pretty narrow and pretty limited, I I mean I'm not I'm not necessarily even saying that we should limit it because I guess the other choice is whatever the 
state allows, you know, we're allowing, even though she's told us what her ideas are at this point, you know, do we need to constrain her in any way? Because it's not even a bar set up at this stage. So again, that's for everybody to think about. But yeah, and actually, and actually, I'm thinking about um, these things tend to go with the way it's been described, right? So she's describing beer and wine and, you know, six months from now, I'd hate somebody to whine, complain about, you know, the fact that she's serving a, a Mike's hard and that wasn't in Right, or I wouldn't want her to. So, what else would we it. call it? You know, to be a little more generous if we wanted to discuss that. I also wouldn't want her to have a problem if her state licensing category isn't exactly limited to beer and wine, and we do. Then maybe do. she has mm -hmm. an issue with them when she goes back because she needs our sign off as part of that. So, can can you speak to that? Do you know what the state? Um, from what I understood, the uh, tavern service bar only is only beer and wine. Okay, but we'll leave it at closely that description. With the state is in our evidence in front of us. And, right. um, we'll leave it at beer and wine. And that's yeah. what they concluded based upon what you wanted to do. Yeah, at first they, they told me no because bookstores aren't supposed to have bars. And then I explained that lots of bookstores have bars throughout the country. And actually, there's one in Connecticut called Atticus. I think, it's, I think it might be on the Yale campus. Um, don't quote me. I might, it might be on a different college campus, but. Um, it's a bookstore and a bar yeah, and a restaurant, um, and they, they serve alcohol and they serve books and it works and it's profitable. Um, so that's what I'm, I'm trying to bring here. I think it, it brings a certain flavor to the community. It sets me apart from um, not only other independents, but also like Barnes and Noble. It's something different um, that we have here. So when we're having an event um, at my bookstore, at that bookstore, you could also grab a drink, which is a nice, it's just a nice adult thing that you know an alternative to going bowling or um you know <laughs> so, tavern service bar allows the sale of wine beer and hard cider not exceeding six percent alcohol by volume and wine to be consumed on the premises with or without the sale of food so i guess we could we could so theoretically say you know and basically in accord with whatever is allowed with under the law. tavern license Perfect. right yeah, probably. Yeah. Yolanda? Yep. So just uh, a couple you. questions. What kind of, do you, do you still have your, uh, do you have book discussions at your bookstore? Like what kind of activities do you have besides someone coming in and browsing through books? Um, we, we do have, um, we have a book club. Well, we have a young adult book club. That's not like where wine comes in. Um, but um, we do have an adult book club. And usually... I supply the wine. So I could see where that would come in. And author events. We have a lot of author events coming okay. up. I have Amy Bloom. I have uh, Penny Goshen. I have uh, Lisa Samia. And I, I have okay, a lot of author yeah. events coming. I mean, yeah, that's the idea is that, um, you know, you're going to an author event. You can grab a drink while you're there. And that helps increase my profit so that yes. I can stay there longer. <laughs> Also George. taxes, you know, I'm paying more taxes too. <laughs> George? I went down there today to see this and I, you know, I hadn't been in the bookstore and I apologize for that because uh, she started out here as an idea she had at home and she wanted to use this premises which was re recently renovated last year and a year before and uh, she wants to expand into the basement eventually and she thinks that this will help her financially to be able to do that and so uh, if we're going to encourage small businesses in town and unique ones because I think a bookstore was was and should have been stayed here in this town and she's providing that so uh, I think uh, what she's trying to do makes some sense to me and she has the premises for it. it's very very nice in there the windows are large and they're new new ones they look like industrial windows I haven't even looked at them and I said <laughs> wow they're different and uh, so she's doing all right there. And the only negative thing really around the premises, because it's all been renovated, is the parking is in back for, the, for everybody. So if she ends up someday doing something with that basement, it uh, to me would, and this will help financially, I'm sure, to do that. Uh, if people tend to come in the back and maybe go up the stairs to the uh, area up above. So. Uh, I think uh, what she's proposing is reasonable in my mind. 
Okay. So, so for the record, uh, there is a memo here from Peter, um, and it references the uh, parking requirements. And it, if I understand your paragraph correctly, you're just basically saying there's, a, there's adequate parking for what's going on today. Um, a, a basement, perhaps, might be a different story. So think about the parking if you do expand downstairs. But anyways, um, is this a public hearing? Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this application? Excellent. Why don't you uh, join us at the mic, and if you would uh, allow. Okay, I'll be very brief. Um, I happened to be at the vets next door when they had their opening, and I walked in, and it was like coming home. Uh, the vanishing of independent bookstores is so unfortunate, and to have it return to Weathersfield is a fantastic addition to our community, and it is a community center already. So I participated in the Writers Club and the Adult Book Club, and it's just a really nice vibe, and I really don't see anybody coming to the store to like get drunk and be rowdy or anything like that. That's not the vibe we have there. So I'm really hoping um, Weathersfield can encourage the small business, which is uh, so wonderful, uh, an addition to our community. Um, I'm sorry, could I get your name for the record, Law? Um, uh, Jean Minor. Thank you. All right. Is there anybody else? All right. Come on back. Uh, any last questions for the applicant? I would just add I've been to the one in Biddeford, Maine that you reference elements. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think it is as you've described it, the being able to get a glass of wine or a beer is secondary to the fact that it's a bookstore, mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost. And I think that that's a very nice setup that they have there. So hopefully that will work well for you as well. I haven't been to Elements. I'll have to check it out. <laughs> Maine is on my bucket list. I'm a new New Englander, you know, so. <laughs> um, anybody uh, care to make a motion regarding the hearing? I will move to approve. Uh, how about uh, closing the hearing first? I'll close the hearing. Second. Second. All right. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. And a motion on the application. I move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you as well. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Excellent. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. What else are we doing? Just not, a, not the big one, huh? <clears throat> okay. Public hearing for application. This is item 3.3. .3, a public hearing for application 1996. Dash 18 dash Z, uh, Town of Weathersfield seeking a zoning text amendment in accordance with section 10 F. I'll just go into it. So obviously you're down some uh, members again, and if you were to vote on this tonight, it would have to be unanimous. So um, I did bring the PowerPoint again. We didn't do it last week. Last time we can hold off again if you want, or I can jump into that, or we can just kind of go through um, the information. Is everybody just staying away because it's your, you know, you're okay. going to be taking a I'm lot starting of time? To, I'm starting to get a complex a little bit, but um, so I defer to how you would like me to proceed. I did uh, provide you with some additional uh, information. At the last meeting, you asked for kind of a summary of the public outreach. Uh, so there is a memo uh, that summarizes um, the public uh, involvement mm -hmm. that we attempted uh, to uh, uh, bring into this process. And then I also provided you with a spreadsheet that compares the present regulations with the proposed regulations. So, um, and then obviously you have a copy of the existing regulations and a copy of the proposed regulations. So um, I will um, proceed as you, uh, as you prefer. Um, do, we, do we have items pending for the next meeting? We have, um, we do. We, have, we had a couple of late submissions uh, uh, late last week and early this week. I didn't put in the pending. So you, we, you have at least two items, um, neither of which are, I think, terribly, uh, should be terribly involved. Um, so there will be time uh, at the next meeting um, if we want to wait and see if we have a, I, a bigger turnout. I think uh, more than five voting on this should be. In order. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and also not to not to make an excuse to put it off, but I think this this spreadsheet is very helpful, and I think 
the fact that you've identified some areas where we may want to fill gaps is something that I don't want to do while we're just kind of sitting here sure. under staff tonight. Sure. Why don't we then at least do this? Let's go through the spreadsheet. I did circle some areas mm -hmm. that um, caught my attention. Uh, it was a good exercise to go through uh, because it identified some potential uh, gaps in the proposed regulation for discussion uh, purposes. So if, if we want to at least use our time uh, to get some feedback uh, on, on that, it would at least be helpful uh, for me so that when we come back, uh, I can maybe provide you with some suggested um, language. Does that sound yeah, if you're looking for appropriate. feedback, that yep. seems appropriate. Okay, so in terms of the, um, just uh, quickly to summarize the public um, involvement, just so that's at least in the um, in the conversation. Um, let me just find that memo here. This, yeah, should it be the. So there's a memo dated October 10th. Um, no, that's not it. November first. November first. November first. I'm sorry. Um, to the commission. Uh, so, uh, as I stated earlier, you had asked for, uh, because there was uh, really no one from the public uh, except for one uh, person. Um, so, just um, a quick summary. Uh, as you recall, we formed the uh, sign subcommittee back in 2017. Uh, that committee was represented by members of the PNZ, Design Review, and the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we did set up a web page uh, in, in the middle of 2017 and put a lot of the information that the committee was working on out there for the public to look at. Um, we did send copies of the existing and proposed regulations to the Chamber of Commerce, and they, uh, on their own, distributed it to their membership uh, so that those documents did get out into the community. Uh, the, the Chamber also, in one of their neat, uh, or several of their weekly email blasts, uh, uh, advertised uh, the pending hearing and the regulation changes. Uh, I also, separately from that, uh, emailed copies of the regulations to several sign companies that do uh, a lot of work here in town and attend uh, design review uh, meetings for sign approvals. Uh, I also sent copies of the proposed changes to some of the larger commercial property owners, including uh, the representatives of the Weathersfield Shopping Center, the Colvest Group, Marshalls Plaza, and the Borden Project. Uh, and then copies of the um, proposed changes were also distributed to members of the Economic Development and Improvement Commission and discussed at one of their um, uh, recent meetings. And then lastly, I, defer, I refer to this um, spreadsheet um, that you have in front of you. I, I did email that to you guys, um, and it's in the, in the file for the record. So um, in terms of the spreadsheet, uh, as, as I noted, it compares today's standards uh, to the proposed standards. It's not necessarily an apples to apples because we've moved some things around and redefined things, but to the best of our ability, we tried to compare um, what the regulations presently are and what those changes uh, are. So the first area that I noted on page one was that presently you have a sign standard called historic marker. Um, the regulation now is 10 square feet, um, and that has to be installed by a, a bona fide historic or government agency. Um, we changed that, and it... it, it um, blossomed into a whole bunch of different types of signs, but we did not include um, a size requirement, and we did not um, feel that a permit was necessary um, for that uh, type of uh, presentation. So that's why I circled um, that particular uh, provision in the proposed regulations. So it's it's not exactly, it doesn't have standards uh, in the. Uh, in in this new proposal. So for example, somebody could put up a commemorative plaque somewhere um, of whatever size they choose and not have to get anyone's um, blessing for that. As long as it doesn't have a commercial message, right? And, and Correct. so <clears throat> I'm trying to frame. So for example. Is this, is this just gonna be some private property owner who wants to put something on the side of their building, right? Or no, it would have to be for a, commu a community, a community use, a historic use, or a religious property. So it does have limitations. It just doesn't have size limitations. Um, so it could be if the historic historical society wanted to put up some sort of uh, 
interpretive historic plaque of some variety explaining the property or explaining some historical event. Uh, if a religious, if a church wanted to put up some symbol, cross or some other religious symbol, um, those are a couple of examples that come to mind. So, so what would you do if, if um, some <clears throat> town resident wanted to put up something that they were calling historic? What, what defines historic for you, the staff, to say okay? So I'd, I'd have to look at the other provisions in the regulations. So Yeah, yeah. no, because I'm yeah. thinking of an example. In, up in New Hampshire, there's somebody who has had an enormous sign on their fence for 22 years saying now it's historic in 1796 absolutely nothing happened here <laughs> yeah. and it's still there yeah i mean it, it's kind of sagged and faded yep i mean that would also that could also potentially be be um under the uh, political um speech provisions which are a little later in the regulations so um So anyway, that's and just we, one. So we don't have to solve it. We, you don't have to solve just, it. I just want to make sure you, you guys think about it, and uh, as we go forward, if if you feel uh, that that warrants some additional um, either definition or standard, um, you know, let's, we can come back to that. Maybe okay. some area or size, or maybe some oversight, you know, like staff permit, just so that if you think somebody's using that as a loophole to do something that should be categorized otherwise mm -hmm. and I I think it's unlikely but you know without getting into arbitrary sizes of what sure. sign and what cross and that sort of thing just having you know just having to ask having somebody a staff permit yep. yeah exactly okay and say no that that's not what you say it is um, on the bottom of that page, um, right now we have a regulation for farms, uh, signs for farms that you can have a 12 square foot sign. You can have one and it has to be approved by the uh, by town staff. Uh, when I compared, I couldn't find anything specific to farm. However, there may be a, it might be able to be added uh, later on in the regulation. So I just circled that as. Uh, uh, have you had any trouble? Well, you're well we don't have a lot of farms sign. left, so first, I'm not really terribly concerned about it. But if somebody wanted to pull, you know, put pull together a farm in the future, um, you know, it, it certainly we would have to figure out how it would how it would fit. So, um, so there is nothing specifically for farm. So, but I'll, I'll I'll bring that up as we go a little bit further into the regulations. There may be a simple. Well, actually, on that one, I think it's content based too, and you may not be able to regulate that distinctly from other commercial or non-commercial signs by saying, oh, it's a commercial sign about farms, you get 12 square feet as opposed to six or vice versa. Mm. Okay, page two, there's a, um, I've circled two areas where the word warning sign is, is so I need to, those probably need to be combined in some way. Um, it just seems duplicative and it, I think it covers the same subject matter so um, so that's why that's that's circled um, further down on page two where it says business zones and I've circled street address um, so so the way this is written um, I don't think we have a similar standard in the business zones I think we have historically allowed businesses to have uh, larger street address street addresses than residential zones so it's probably something we need to Think about in uh, later on in the in the business zone section. That's why that's circled. Page three, I wrote in the word farm, so maybe that farm sign could be lumped into this particular category. It is a big sign, 24 square feet. Um, not sure that's the best solution, but that's an idea of where the farm signs uh, on, a, on a farm, not necessarily advertising a farm, but. Ultimately, it would advertise the farm, but you can't regulate content as we discussed. Uh, at the bottom of that page, um, there might be some, there's probably something missing here. Detached signs for principal use, special permit use on a residential property. Um, yeah, I think that was that the might one be above we too. Surprised 
that um, haircut guy on Beverly Road. Yeah. Actually, I was wrong on that one. Um, so um, there was there is a standard. It's much less than. Um, so I. You, you can't have the sign that you approved. It's too big, even though you reduced what I thought was the standard. So just while you brought that up, just so that for the record. What so I told them. 12 squared? Something like that. Yeah, which was bigger than present regulations allow. So I think he's allowed four. I thought it was because there were two of them or something. No. So, okay. so on that note. So this is a gap in the regulations, but I think the section above... Um, where, I would, where I wrote in farm could probably be modified to cover these situations because it also requires, you know, that the use have been previously approved by site plan or special permit or variance. So that might be a solution uh, to that. Page four. Uh, in the commercial zones, permanent signs. Right now we have a special requirement for the village business district commercial zone. Um, I did not make that same provision in the proposed standards, so I um, so I probably just have to clarify clarify that. Uh, special in terms of it's a smaller sign area that's permitted. There. It's uh, it's as small as it gets, so it would be on the smaller side uh, under the proposed standards. Presently, in a village business district zone, you can have a 25 square foot detached sign. Um, which is the smallest um, commercial sign um, permitted in, in any commercial zone. So, um, so that would be the concept. But I probably need to be very specific then about that. To maintain that limit. Yes. yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maintain a smaller limit. So. Yeah, because I mean it's a yep. low speed street with yep. smaller yep. lots, so it makes yep. sense. Uh, page five. Um, once again, in business and industrial zones, uh, this is the um, detached manual or electronic changeable copy sign. Um, although this proposed standard is basically allowing an electronic sign, it has to stay static. So this is not the you know not the changeable. These are more like um, time and temperature, um, fuel prices. Um, right now. I circled uh, that it needs a permit. I circled that because I. Uh, um, you don't want to chase that. Yeah, the proposal. The, when it says yes, it needs a permit. These are only these would be issued by staff, not by the commission. So I just want to make sure it's not something that you want to continue to review in the future. Right now, if, if a gas station comes in for a electronic price sign, you guys have been having special permit hearings on those. So I wanted to make sure you're aware that this proposal would defer that to town staff with subject to all the caveats in that other box. It has to be static. It's one color, black background, letter height. Uh, they don't seem to come in for, say, larger ones, some of them. Do they? they don't because you're, you have a standard for that. Okay. And it continues here. Right? Yeah, it continues here. So. Yeah. yeah, it would still be limited pretty heavily. So, uh, so I, I, I think the committee didn't think, well, I think you need right it. Size, okay. Right maxes. Is there, just, and they just, probably all go to the same max. Yeah. Okay. As part of the process that I know has gone on for quite a while, has there been, you know, discussion just in terms of conceptually whether to want electronic signs going forward? I think the committee um, sort of accepted the trend that. Most gas stations are now doing that. Uh, uh, banks are now doing that. So it's, they've kind of accepted the fact. They didn't really have a philosophical conversation about whether that's good, bad, or indifferent, but they just kind of acknowledged that, you know, they are happening. We should have regulations for it and determine how to go so forward with that. So under this, it's limited to a bank or a gas or station. Gas station. Basically, it can't be other types of businesses. That's correct. So it can't be or typically is it? Cannot be. Right now, the way this is written, it would just be fueling stations and financial institutions. So, for example, a lot of the uh, pharmacies are now doing it. Um, CVS has done a couple of them. Um, that would not uh, be permitted here in town. It would just be banks and um, gas stations, which are the traditional so, land uses that have those kind of signs. 
So, so in that box, um, other. So when you say if electronic must remain static, so it's the kind of sign that you wouldn't be changing like City Fish does. It's, right. It would just stay the same. It's just a static yeah. price. You know, they change them. You know, sometimes they'll change it the next day or whatever, right, but, but it's not, not not changing. Not, not like the real estate one on the Silas no. Highway. No, that's a different category. We'll get to that. No problem. Problem. So, yeah. yeah. So as long as it's just limited to those type yep. of things, I don't care to see it. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, at the bottom of that page, um, right now we allow businesses to have open signs, which are usually flags and banners that blow in the wind. Uh, they can be as uh, they can be as big as 12 square feet. You can have one of those, and it does require a permit uh, from the zoning officer. Um, Th there is one down here on the Silas D, you know. What is it? In the, almost the corner of the banner. And I think it may be temporary. Which which business is it? Is it or what's the name of it? Phone? Sprint. Sprint. Yeah. Oh that's a that's a pending enforcement action. So Oh it is? Yeah. 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 <laughs> they, they, they don't want to take it, it down. <laughs> where is that? The uh, in the uh, where um used to be the healthcare um next to City Fish. Right. In that little yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah. No, they have one That's of those. One. They have one of those uh, blow up. Yeah. It's you know. High. I was going to call you on it, but no, he's he's know. been out there several times. So yeah. well, interesting. So um, so right now we allow open signs, since we're not allowed to ha uh, regulate content anymore. Uh, so we created this just this category for flags. However, um, the committee was thinking about you know state flags national flags um, so the proposal was to allow flags like that uh, 50 square feet you could have three of them which is traditionally on a flagpole you know you've got the US the state and you know there's usually another flag set up with that uh, and make those exempt from getting any permits we don't want to be regulating you know American flags you're not regulating we're not so state. however it I did it there is a there is something missing here so for businesses mm. Um, who want to have an open, which we haven't had a problem with, there may be there's something missing here. So we wouldn't want businesses to have 50 square foot non -Ameri you know, non U.S. and have the and have be able to have three of those at any particular time without having a permit. So there's something missing here that I've got to I mean, think the, about for the for the for that category of the 50. Can you make clear it's of a non-commercial nature, not advertising any business or commercial activity? whatsoever this you know something like that we probably could which would limit it further but there's still i think a, something well, missing that would be yeah. under the municipal yeah. exemption how's right. that to the content rule i, I don't know but you mean otherwise i think somebody could call it a quote flag and right. it's really a business advertisement right okay mm -hmm. it is one of those gray area like if you were selling things. cars and put an american right. flag on every one of them or, or just or even a flag that says you know smith Buick or something like that, and they call it a. They they claim it's a with red, white, and blue background. How's that? Mm -hmm. uh, so it is something there. I got. I'm gonna have to work on something there. There's a there's a potential loophole there that I've got to think about. Um, I, guess I, w I was even thinking of being you know, like a, a sports team flag or yeah. something like yeah. that. You know, a yeah. bar, sports bar. You know, you have a bunch of yeah. So there is it is an area that needs a little. A little more thought. And are there are there any of that on a flagpole in front of the town hall or something? So so that's what we were thinking about. Three of the you know that's what the town has three poles with room for three different. Um, however, um, businesses don't typically. It's a it's a rare business that does a setup like that. Could you couldn't you couldn't you almost interpret it as a flagpole really isn't a sign and therefore doesn't even need to be addressed here. Potentially. Well, that's kind of what this this is. It's you don't need a permit. You know, it's kind of exempt, but there is a standard so that somebody doesn't, you know, right. I guess go, I go wild. So distancing, distancing itself from so, the business. So, so are, are you saying basically, well, ignore those. Don't bother with that discussion. Correct. Do the commercial ones. So and don't use the word flag. Right. 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 In whatever you do allow. Right. Right. Well, actually, I was going to say use the flag. Uh, of any content, and it does require staff. Oh, and, check. and limited to a small amount of square feet. Right, right now it's 12 square feet, so. 
And if it's at a business that counts cumulatively with all the other signage, Peter, you count the on the building, the ground sign, the flag, and all together can't exceed. No, we don't. We don't do that. So we don't have a cumulative um, uh, concept. And um, you're allowed multiple signs. Certain types of signs do have maximums, but when you add them all up, we didn't. We didn't go that far. Some towns do, uh, but I. We didn't go down that road. So. All right, so I'll take a look at that. Uh, page seven at the bottom. This is um, temporary signs in any zone. Um, so this is construction signs. So I think we missed we missed uh, commercial construction sign provisions. Right now, you can have a commercial construction sign. Um, they are temporary. Uh, you can have 32 square foot. So we just we missed something along the way. So I need to transpose that over um, here so or is that the one right above it I, I don't I, I, yeah it might be I don't know um, yeah it could be I wrote through some things I don't like four foot high or something like that yeah it might not be accurate okay I'll uh, that's probably it yep there was a discussion last time about... Um, oh, that's residential, the one above. So I need to do something similar for commercial. Yeah, I think um, it should. Yep. So a discussion last time. I'm trying to remember who was kind of annoyed by it. Probably Dan. <laughs> probably Dan about the construction signs down on the Silas Dean Highway and the plethora of them on uh, the board. Oh, on the fence. And how does that right. fit in here? I'm yeah. glad to see construction sign up so you know what's going happening. Yeah, there's a little part of me that goes, you know, as long sure, as it's not going to be up that long anyways, right? But I don't know. Four feet. Sense. Yeah, I, I, think, I, don't, I think under, I think right now it was allowed. There's, you, there's no limit on these. Well, I think there, well, I shouldn't say that, but there is a loophole in the present regulations that allowed them to do that. I don't know that it got carried over, um, so I'll make a note on that. But is that a sign or a banner? That's not a banner. Those are banners, yeah. That, but they are. They have commercial message, so they're yes. considered a sign. So, um, almost through here. Up in the I, I think that was it. So, so there's a couple of people out here. I'd like to offer them an opportunity. But is there something in particular that you wanted to express to us? You're just listening and interested. Very good. I made that comment about the signs of the Oh, okay. There you go. So, Tom, I'm following up for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and you called me Dan Sullivan. Oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, those were, they were under a different, I can't, I can't remember what they were approved on. It wasn't this one. It was something else. Um, which I don't, I don't recall what that one was, but it wasn't that, it wasn't that one. It was something else. They have, um, there's, there's a provision somewhere in the existing regulations. You can have something up for a 12 month period of time. Yeah, I can look, I can see what he, it, the, they filed an application and everything. So the section should be right in there. Uh, Joe was asking me about the um, the, the, the electronic changeable the, the you know the yes. city fish signs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's at the page fifteen. Yep, page 15. So those um, are in a whole different category than the standard spread spreadsheet. So under the proposed regulation, and the committee spent a lot of time on this. Um, so it's section uh, it. Page 15, Section J, permanent signs requiring a special permit in business zones. Um, and only in the regional commercial and the general business zone. So the commission felt those are the only two zones that uh, those types of signs should be allowed in. One, electronic changeable message sign subject to the following. You know, they talk about 
how frequently the message can change, how much of the sign can be electronic, uh, has to have programming capabilities for dimming based on light conditions, um, should be turned, shall be turned off during non-business hours, um, you know, shall, shall not be oriented to residential zones, um, shall not depict, you know, motion, and the message shall, um, if, it, if it changes almost instantaneously, that's not considered motion. Um, if it's damaged, it has to go into a default mode where it turns off. Um, so there's all sorts of provisions uh, in here. They looked at, you know, some industry standards uh, and incorporated those into that. So uh, those would only be uh, permissible after the commission uh, reviews a uh, special permit, has a hearing on it. Um, so a couple, what's the size max on it, that? It depends on the, so it's, um, let's see here. Could these be building mounted or ground mounted? So this is a let's see, free is it freestanding? Let me see. I think it would be subject to the underlying yes size the sizes right regulation. Yeah, I'm just seeing if we call this a freestanding or we or did we clarify that? No. A talks about no. wall signs, but right. B doesn't say. Yeah, so it, uh, the intent was to have. Uh, well, I don't know what the I, I'd have to go back myself and see if they were thinking about, but, but I think traditionally. Um, they're looking at detached signs, but I'll go back on my notes and okay. confirm that. But it doesn't, it, do, it isn't clear um, the way this is written. Yeah. I mean, I, I, can I just, and again, I know committee looked at this and spent a lot of time, but I guess we've, we've debated this like in the city fish sign and the bank sign and the realtor company sign here on the Silas way, Highway. Yeah. And I just have a couple thoughts. I guess I, you know, I have concerns about that type of sign generally, you know, and whether it sort of gives you the Las Vegas effect or the effect at Constitution Plaza in Hartford with photos and videos and moving stuff. And I guess I think it's even more of a concern if it's on the side of a building itself as opposed to on the ground. Um, that's like what they're doing it in Hartford on the Constitution Plaza yep. buildings, which I, again, I have I have concerns about this kind of sign generally, you know, more pronounced on the building, but even in a ground application. And I guess I would just question if you look around surrounding towns, you know, how many of them are prohibiting those? And if you look at places, you know, like Newington, West Hartford, Rocky Hill, Avon, Simsbury, um, Glastonbury, South Windsor, you know, my my guess is there are probably a number of them that don't allow them at all. Certainly the Glastonbury's, the West Hartford's, the Farmington's, the Avon's, the Simsbury's, I'd be very surprised if and, they allow And you them. feel we don't want to be the one that does allow it in the whole area. I, I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think and, it... And, and you're talking about the sides and the front of the building. Right. And, and City and just, Fish is... I mean, there was not, not, it, 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 it was there, but it just, yeah. Silestine Highway, Berlin Turnpike already yeah. are very commercial. It seems this, this takes us up so, to the next rung of intensity. And I'm so I think everybody generally had that same impression when we were first talking about it five years ago, right? Yeah. Um, but if, if we're not being clear that this applies to detached, I would suggest that at least is available to us to call it, to call back any you know future expansion of what's going on, right? Because we don't have them on the sides of the building yet. But the side, you know, if you're putting them up on the sides of buildings, they're ten, they, they, they tend to be bigger, right? I mean, the the, the amounts allowed are bigger, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think the I think the intent was detached, but it, detached it's, smaller it's up there. front, yep. Right? Yep. right? I guess I I'll, I'll go back to what we've discussed many times, which is. You know, first sort of decide, do you even want this type of thing to be available? Because if the consensus is no, I don't think it's enough to say, well, gee, they need a special permit and we can always decide not to give it to them because no. we've had many debates where people say once it's allowed, how can you deny all the special permits? You really, if you feel that way, you shouldn't do it in the first place, it seems to me. I would agree with you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know. That city fish, as Rich will say many times, he points out to me uh, and all of us, 
that uh, you know they took down a lot of signage in order to get that right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. He came in and made a big appeal here to the owner. Uh, I'm not saying if you come in and make a big appeal, we should listen to him. But in that case, it made some sense because we we're losing a lot of building signage there, and I think it turned out okay. And and that does sit down. As somebody mm -hmm. mentioned to me, somebody here in town. So so you know, um. I'm not sure I'm following the conversation. I think you're saying we should, at least if we really don't like it, don't include it, period. You're saying, you know, but well, we have this process in place that allows it by special permit and it worked, right? Isn't that what I'm hearing? They're kind of conflicting views. I'm saying let's seriously consider whether we want them at all. And I'll let George speak for himself, but I thought he was sharing some of my yeah, concerns. I, I I'd rather not have them. Hey. But, but you present an example of where it works. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but we all, it also worked because we made exceptions in the sense that we were taking down other signage in order to get that done. Yeah, I mean, it, it was an improvement over the existing condition, yeah. even though it was exactly. a even message. Even though we didn't sign. really want to. And you could, again, I'm not advocating this, but I suppose you could also theoretically say in, 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 that it's got to be so limited, you know, A, it's got to be on the ground, and it can't exceed literally four by six or three by five, and if you do that, you lose your ability to have other signage on right. your building. And because and that, that one is there doesn't mean we right. have to approve it everywhere in town. Right. That one was an exception. That's the point. Of well, it is up to, there's at least two, right? We, we kind of, the first one, they both went up before we gave them real approval. Right? I think the, the first one certainly. Oh, really? Was well, on, yeah. on the other side of the connector at the like safe and lock or yep there is a, a black and red one yeah yeah. Tech. yeah we said no to the haircut one i think and nails they wanted to have again in a window right so i guess i'm just saying can we at least sort of give some yeah, additional consideration to some of the sure. surrounding yeah i can towns. i can look at the uh, surrounding towns and bring that information back and you guys can then take it from there yeah i mean and that's the kind of discussion that would like to have with more than just us. Right. Yes. But it's a legitimate subject for discussion. Mm -hmm. So just uh, for what it's worth, the city fish sign would not be permitted under these new standards because they have the animation and the changeable. They won't be. Okay. Would not be oh. permitted under That's this. Fine. So. Which they don't use though, right? Yeah, they use it. So even the parameters that we gave them would not be acceptable? That's correct. Really? These are more restrictive. Yeah, I don't think we went into great detail with them about, you know, dimming and right. graphics and. Jeez, I thought we did, right? The time, the Which period of time. Turning it off at night. Yeah. So. Okay. All right, well, this is a hearing, so we should probably, I think we need a motion to continue it, right? Yep. I move so to man. continue. I'll, I'll second. All right, thank you. Thank you both. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Other business, or move on to the minutes. So, do we have enough people here? I doubt it because mm -hmm. Joe probably wasn't at the last one, right? I didn't read. I, I wasn't at the last one either. Were. So, so we're going to hold off and put that to the next meeting. Motion to table. Okay. Motion to table the minutes. So moved. Thank you. Also, all those in favor say aye, aye. aye Staff reports, anything else? General nature? Um, just trying to think if there's anything. You, you, we do have a couple of applications that came in late, so we will have a couple of agenda items. Um, next meeting is two weeks. Yeah, next meeting is two weeks um, on a Tuesday. 13 days. 13 days, there you go. 20th. Oh, yeah, because it's back to Tuesday. Right. Right. Anything else then? All right. Speak up. Oh, just um, we had a we had a, a well attended uh, bike and pedestrian workshop at the community center uh, on the thirtieth of October. Uh, the attendance was uh, uh, more than we anticipated. It was a pretty good forum, so uh, we got lots of um, interesting uh, comments. Um, we have been uh, there's a community survey out there. We have. Nearly 600 completed surveys. Really? Yeah. 
pretty impressive. Six hundred now. Six hundred now. Yep. So you only had two four hundred, I thought. Yeah, they they need. spiked up again. So um, wow. So we'll have lots of public input into this process, and um, we'll have another workshop in the early part of next year. But this was uh, yeah very well uh, very well attended, and lots of lots of uh, very interested residents in the in the process and in the ultimate plan. So uh, we'll keep you. Uh, Keep you posted on that as we go forward. Good. Did you run out of refreshments? Yeah, the cookies. Um, yeah, they started busting up the cookies. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, stamp, there Cut, was a stampede. Cutting, yeah. cutting them in half. So we let the, we let the children uh, go first. So. <laughs> there were children at. There were lots of children at this meeting. There well, you think? Yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Kind of. Yeah, it's, it's not something you normally see at a community meeting. So, uh, yeah, it was good. Good. All right. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, I got a short